Right, now that we have seen how to describe sample spaces for random experiments, and we have talked about Laplace's principle, uh, it, it seems that it's important to, to really find out how many outcomes are in an event. So it may not be always obvious. And when asked about such a probability, you might have to count um, the number of outcomes in an event in the context of a random experiment, which brings us to the next subject we are going to uh, talk about today, which is counting. And we are going to see a few um, general principles that we can apply when we deal with uh, counting problems. And now we are going to start our discussion with a simple example. Uh, suppose that a student named, let's say, Ali, eats at a cafe with 10 different dishes for a week. Okay, so at this cafe, you can select among 10 different dishes. And uh, he picks his meal completely at random each day. So somehow he selects them randomly. And uh, we, he does this for seven days. And the first question asks, how many possible menus can Ali have during these seven days? Now, first of all, let's recognize in this first part, we are not asked a probability. Okay, first we are asked the number, the, the count uh, of um, such an event, let's say. How many possible menus can Ali have during these seven days? Essentially, this will describe the sample space. So in this part A, we are actually finding the number of total possible outcomes when Ali picks his uh, meals at random during seven days um, among 10 different dishes. Now, to find the solution to this, we are going to apply what we call the product rule. Um, and essentially, we are going to assume since um, he picks the dishes completely at random each day, then we can assume that his selection on one day is not going to affect his selection on the next day or the other day. So we'll just assume he selects um, the dishes um, independently on each day. And on each day, let's say this is day one, he has 10 choices, 10 different dishes, 10 choices here. And his selection on day number two, again, he has 10 alternatives because we assume um, his selection uh, on a day is not affected from his selections on the other days. Similarly, day number three, again, 10 options. Day number four, five, six, and day number seven, he has 10 possible options. Now we are going to multiply these to obtain 10 to the power seven, total number of possible menus, okay? Why did we do that? Because here we are distinguishing between the orders. For instance, on day one, let's say he selects dish number one. And in the remaining days, he selects dish number two. This is one possible menu, but for instance, assume that on day one, he selects dish number two, and on day two, selects dish number one, and in the remaining days, he again selects dish number two. Okay, so when you look at the number of uh, dishes, in the first uh, scenario, he selects one dish one and six dish two, and that's the same for the second scenario, but the distribution of uh, the dishes to the days is different. In the first scenario, he has dish one on day one, and in the second one, he has dish one on day number two. So we treat these as different outcomes, which means we uh, do not ignore the order. 
okay? Therefore, that is the reason we use the product rule and multiply all these uh, because you can actually uh, combine these uh, selections with, uh, uh, to obtain a different menu each day. And the, the, the answer is 10 to the power seven. Now in part B, we are now asked a probability. What is the probability that Ali has the same meal every day? So this could be dish one all through the week or dish two all through the week or dish three all through the week, etc. up to dish 10 all through the week, right? You see, we have 10 such possible outcomes, 10 such menus in which the dish is exactly the same on each day of the week. Therefore, we have 10 events in our, sorry, 10 outcomes in our um, event. And using Laplace's principle, the answer to this is 10 divided by 10 to power seven, which is one in a million. Okay, to sum up, we are going to call this um, scenario sampling with replacement with order. Okay, recall we care about the order. And what does replacement do we mean with replacement? A replacement this here means that we can repeat our selection throughout uh, the scenario. Okay, recall that if you select dish one on day number one, you are not forbidden to select dish one again the next day or the other day, okay? So that we call replacement. And sampling means you just select outcomes. So this scenario uh, described in this question is sampling with replacement. That means you can repeat and with order. That means you care about the order. And essentially, there are n to power k ways to choose a sequence of k items out of a population of n. Now, the sequence here is the keyword because it describes an order. Because if you change the order in a sequence, you obtain a different sequence. Okay, So the order is going to be significant here. And you make... Um, K selection, so you select K items. So item number one, item number two, up to K. And since you have replacement, when you make a selection here out of N possible alternatives, in your next selection for item number two, you can repeat it. Therefore, the number of options you have is still n, it doesn't diminish. Therefore, the result will be the product of k n's, which gives you, as stated here, n to power k. Uh, 